AI is the talk of the town, with every major tech company integrating artificial intelligence into their devices and systems. Literally every video you consume or every article you read will mention AI. But how does it work? Is it as smart as it seems? Or is it just really good at guessing? In this video, I am going to debug and explain in detail how it works and how much of it is already integrated into our lives. From debugging these human-like machines to digging deep into their workings. This is all what you need to know about how AI works. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Anudeep Sharma and I work as a software engineer after completing my master's degree in robotics and AI from Purdue University. And in this video, I wanted to explain in very simple language how AI works and is able to give jaw-dropping responses to the inputs we give to it. Please bear in mind that I will be skipping a lot, I mean a lot, because this topic of AI is extensive as it is while expanding every day. And this video is just about the very basics, but in due time, I can make more detailed videos about other aspects of AI. And please leave your comments down below on what you need to know about AI. And enough of the talk, let's get started. In very simple terms, AI is just a computer system that thinks in ways that mimic human intelligence. So basically, how do we humans think? We see pictures and real life in action, we see videos and we read books and articles, and after taking a lot of this information, over time, we begin to find patterns and understand what all this information is. For example, I know that this is a glass of water, but I didn't know that when I was a child. My parents told me that this is a glass of water, and after repeatedly recognizing it, I formed an understanding of it. This is pattern recognition for you. On another note, I can also learn new things as a human being. Because once I learn to recognize the glass, I can also learn what a quadratic equation is. And after knowing about it, after practicing it, after getting feedback on it via lectures and exams, I can solve any new quadratic equation that is given to me. Now, AI is the same but different. Let me explain. AI learns through machine learning, right? Yes, but let's understand how. Just like how we learn from human experience, we give these machines huge amounts of data and this data is processed by machine learning algorithms. Stay with me for a few minutes. Things will get clearer every moment from now on. Now, these pieces of code or algorithms are at the very core statistical models. All of machine learning can be boiled down to statistics, which is basically mathematics. So once all this data is fed into the system, it is like giving input to a software and on the other side, we have an output. This output can be what it should be or not. In which case, we give feedback to the machine, meaning that we tell the model that what you have given as output is not what it is supposed to be and also tell it what it is supposed to be and then run the whole process again. If it gives the right answer, we reward the model, basically marking it as correct. If not, we again correct it and then rerun the simulation again. After analyzing a lot of data and getting feedback on it again and again, this AI model begins to form an understanding of this particular data set. And now, if we give this machine learning model some new data, it will try to predict the right answer based on all the learning that it has done. Hence, all machine learning outputs are nothing but predictions. But if chosen the right data set, the right model, labeled correctly and given feedback in the right way, these predictions can be trained to give outputs that we want from them. A small example is when you use your Google Lens to film a cat, it knows that it is a cat because it has data from all over the internet which is the data set in this case and it has learned through the process that I just now explained and now it is merely predicting that this new photo that I'm showing to it is also a cat while also adding that photo to its existing data set to make future predictions better. Hence, AI is the development of these systems that can perform tasks that would typically require human intelligence. These are not intelligent things, by the way. We are developing their intelligence and they are merely predicting on the learning that we are providing to them, which sometimes can go wrong. That is why all AI tools from ChatGPT to Gemini to this Bing AI chatbot, all of them have a line in the end saying that the outputs that they give may be wrong and that the user should use these tools at their own risk. 
So AI is literally ingrained into our lives. We do talk about getting rid of AI because of them potentially becoming more intelligent than humans to the point that they start ruling over humans. But it really is impossible to remove AI now. This technology of machine learning and artificial intelligence blew up big time after the invention of ChatGPT. But we have been using AI since the last 2-3 decades in the form of Amazon Alexa, Google Photos, Gmail, spam filters. And all these technologies use extensive AIs. Some other examples of AIs are virtual assistants. So people like Siri or Google Assistant or Alexa, they are all... Okay, Alexa, stop. Wow. Anyways, my point was that all these people use a technology called NLP or natural language processing, which we are not going to discuss today. That is for some other day. But basically, this is a subfield of AI, which turns our speech to text. And then the, this text can be used as input to a separate machine learning model to get the output that we desire. We also have recommendation systems. So basically Netflix suggesting shows, YouTube recommending some videos, uh, Spotify creating some custom playlists or like recommending you playlists that based on your consumption of music and even Amazon recommending products. All these systems use AI extensively. Every click you make, Every visit to a site is a particular data point for these AI models. They are trained specifically on these. And then the next time you open that particular platform, it will recommend or suggest you based on what you have liked before. Meaning that these algorithms will try to predict what you will like now based on what you have liked before. Social media feeds work in the same way. So feeds of Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, X, all these use AI to decide what to put in your feed. My Instagram feed is very different from yours because I click, like, comment, share, subscribe on different types of content. I watch different types of content than you. Hence, my machine learning model, not my, but the machine learning algorithm or the model that is governing what comes into my feed is taking into consideration what I like and subscribe to. And that is why it will show more of it to me. On a very separate note, we have image and face recognition systems which require computer vision. That is yet another feed of AI, which we will not be discussing today. But the point is, these AI models can analyze images to identify objects and facial expressions and emotions. And behind the scenes technology of all of this is called deep learning, which again, you guessed it right, we won't be discussing because this is a very general overview of AI. Anyways, moving forward, we also have healthcare systems. So for example, this Fitbit of mine or Apple Watch or even diagnostic handlers at healthcare institutions, all of these use AI. And they work in a very similar way of how a doctor would treat their patients in the sense that a doctor studies so much in the sense that he or she will study for four, five years, 10 years to gain a lot of knowledge. And all of that knowledge is like ingrained in their brains and they have their patients experience as well. So when a new patient visits them and they have a report in front of them, their brain is trying to find patterns and analyze what this disease could be based on what they have studied in their education plus what symptoms their previous patients have had. The only difference here is that AI can remember and recall hundreds if not thousands of times of data as a usual doctor and that is the advantage of using this technology for diagnosis. Okay, so now that we have a general understanding of how AI works and how it is deeply ingrained into our lives, let's learn how an AI learns. A lot of learning happening today, I can say that. So let's revisit how the AI system works in detail, taking ChatGPT as our example. So the first step in the machine learning process is data collection and preparation. Imagine you want to teach ChatGPT how to have meaningful conversations. First, we need to gather a lot of data. This would mean tons of examples from books, articles, podcasts, film videos, film scripts, and whatnot. This is exactly how you learn to speak and converse and listen when you are a child. Anyways, coming back to our ChatGPT example, when we are feeding data to it, we realize that some of this data is corrupted, meaning that some of the sentences are not correct, their grammar is messed up, and some of the pictures are blurred, some of the words are incomplete. So we fix that data or remove it so that we have a clean data and we can tell ChatGPT this is what you need to learn from and it will not have incorrect information while learning from it. Then after the data is ready, now we have to choose the right approach or the right AI model for the training purposes. Because once we have the data, 
it's time to teach our very own friend chat gpt we show it examples of conversations like hey how is it going and also possible responses like i'm doing fine thank you this is called supervised learning because we are supervising what chat gpt learns and how it should respond in a different case we might not tell chat gpt what the response is we can just throw in all the data that we have and it automatically categorizes the questions and their responses after seeing that repeated behavior a million times in different books articles podcasts and stuff like that this is called unsupervised learning because we are not supervising the learning of the model we are just throwing away the data and it is doing classification or like some other form of statistical analysis to just classify different types of responses and then we can label them afterwards there's also a reinforcement learning where if the answer that the chat gpt gives to our questions is correct we reward it and if not we don't do anything so over time chat gpt learns to give the answers that it gets rewards to now as this learning process is happening our very own chat gpt learns to understand what is important in a conversation for instance it might learn that when you ask it how are you doing or how are you it is not supposed to just give you some random answer but about how it is feeling for instance it might notice that when someone says how are you a good response is to talk about how you're feeling rather than your favorite car these are important pieces of a conversation often called as features and they help it to understand what to say next it is very similar to how we understand what to reply to somebody else when somebody asks us a question just that in this case the ai is not concerned about the images videos and noises just the text characters because chat gpt is a text based model it is just concerned about the structure of the sentences and it is just learning how different words fit together to form sensible replies now after it has done all the learning process it is time to test it out we give chat gpt new conversations it has never seen before and see how it performs if it says something strange or irrelevant we know there's a problem and we adjust how it is trained meaning we either change the features we change the model we tweak the model we tweak the parameters of the model all of these are complicated terms but basically what they mean is we are changing how chat gpt learns or rather what it should learn we repeat this process until it gets better at understanding our questions and answering them correctly this testing process helps us make sure that this chat gpt can handle real conversations not just the data it was trained on finally our chatbot is ready to be launched if you ask it something new based on all the learning that it has had it will try to predict the right answer that you ask it and after all this learning most probably at the launching stage a chatbot or any finished ai product has gone through enough cycles so as to predict correctly most of the times what you are asking it and this system can be implemented into an app into websites into other tools into full blown devices and it can help us make our lives better because it has been trained on this huge amounts of data and even if it messes up we give it feedback and our input is used as data sets for the future inputs and it continuously keeps on improving talking about feedback if a response that you get from a model or in this case chat gpt is not what you want there's a thumbs up or thumbs down button on the chat gpt and if you click thumbs down it tells the model that what you spit out as answer is not correct and it will take that into consideration the next time somebody asks it the same question so to sum it up chat gpt learns by looking at a lot of examples figuring out its patterns in conversations in this case practicing again improving through feedback just like we do when we talk to others All right so this was all the information and hopefully for those of you who are still here i hope this was helpful in understanding what this ai devil is and realize that it is not much of a devil but a set of systematically performed steps these ai systems are not intelligent on their own because their intelligence is created by humans in the first place as long as you learn to leverage ai in your work there is no need to worry about ai taking over your life or the world in fact the world will be yours i am thinking of making a series of videos on ai so let me know in the comments down below if you like this one and if you want to know about anything specific in the machine learning realm i really like making these super detailed videos which involve a lot of research plus my own expertise on the subject having worked in tech and having specialized degrees in this field uh and so yeah i'm always looking forward to that as always thumbs up if you liked it subscribe if you loved it as always it means a lot and i will see you in the next one peace